three, two, one, fire. NASA is creating a new launch system called the Space Launch System, SLS. The development costs of both the SLS and its ground systems are so high that there has to be a formal notification and Congress review on it. This is very expensive, and the rocket is very much like the Saturn V, and is set for a ride to the moon. While they are still testing the prototypes, issues are arising. On January 16, 2021, there was a test fail which is making it seem like the hopes of this billion dollar space vehicle are getting dashed. There is a lot more about the costs and details of the rocket, and we have it all here for you. So make sure to watch this video until the end, and subscribe if you haven't already. NASA has been developing a huge rocket called the Space Launch System SLS, to launch astronauts into the moon, and eventually Mars. The most powerful launch vehicle ever built since the 1960s is set to make its debut on November 2021. The plan is that NASA will send a man and woman to the lunar surface in 2024. This will be the first landing with humans since Apollo 17 in 1972. Astronauts have been making regular trips to the International Space Station in the past 20 years, however the moon is nearly a thousand times more distant than the ISS, and this means that a bigger rocket has to be used to land people on the moon. In February 2010, the Obama administration cancelled George W. Bush's plan to return to the moon by 2020. This was called Constellation, and many of the workers in five southern states including Alabama, Florida, Louisiana, Mississippi, and Texas were devastated as tens of thousands of jobs were created in the process. This made legislators in the Capitol Hill furious. A Republican senator from Alabama, Richard Shelby, said at the time that Congress would not sit back and watch the reckless abandonment of sound principles, a proven track record, a steady path to success, and the destruction of our human spaceflight program. After much deliberation, lawmakers from affected states insisted on building a single super-heavy rocket to replace the other launches being worked on for the Constellation program. From this decision, the SLS idea was burst. The SLS is the modern counterpart of the Saturn V, which was the huge launcher built during the Apollo era. Just the way it was in the Saturn, the SLS is split into segments, or stages, stacked on top of each other. But with the SLS, the rocket will also incorporate technology from the Space Shuttle. Block 1 is the name of the first version of the SLS and is set to go through a series of upgrades in the coming years. This is going to ensure that it can launch heavier payloads into destinations beyond low Earth orbit. The block is taller than the Statue of Liberty, towering over 23 stories over the launch pad. The Vice President and Program Manager John Shannon made some remarks about the rocket. He said, It's a truly immense rocket. It's just draw-droppingly big. In other words, when you see the SLS put together, you just haven't seen anything like it since the Saturn V. The rocket is being built to be able to launch astronauts in NASA's next-generation crew vehicle, Orion. It will boost Orion to the speeds necessary to break out of low Earth orbit and travel onwards to the moon. The SLS is made up of a giant core stage flanked by two solid rocket boosters, SRBs. This core has in it two large storage tanks called propellers. One is for liquid hydrogen fuel, and the other is for an oxidizer, liquid oxygen. The oxidizer will make the fuel burn when in contact with the hydrogen. The base of the core stage has four RS-25 engines. These engines are the exact ones that were used to power the space plane, like Shuttle Orbiter, which was retired in 2011. When liquid hydrogen and oxygen enter into the engine chambers, they're ignited with a spark. This chemical reaction produces massive amounts of energy and steam. The steam exits engine nozzles with a speed of 16,000 km per hour to generate thrust, which will propel the rocket through the air. The SRBs are there to give extra power to the rocket to escape the clutches of gravity. The twin boosters stand very tall and burn 6 tons of solid propellant per second. During the first two minutes of flight, the SRBs provide 75% of the total thrust in the rocket. Using thrust as a measure, the SLRs will be the most powerful rocket ever launched when it flies into space. The Block 1 SLS should generate 8.8 .8 million pounds of thrust at launch, 15% more than that of the Saturn V. The Soviet Union attempted to reach the moon in the 1960s and built a rocket called the N1. Its first stage was able to produce 10.2 million pounds of thrust. Unfortunately, all four tests ended in failure. The upgraded version of the SLS, called Block 2 Cargo, should approach the thrust levels of the N1, but the Starship, the rocket being built by Elon Musk's SpaceX, is expected to exceed both. The Starship should produce about 15 million pounds of thrust. This vehicle is also currently being developed and should be set for its first flight in the next few years.
The SLS core stage was built based on the Space Shuttle's foam-covered external tank. The tank fed propellant to three RS-25 engines at the rear of the shuttle orbiter. The SLS has a different twist to it. Some components and structures from the shuttle went through significant design changes due to the different levels of stress placed on them by the SLS. For example, the Space Shuttle, the RS-25 engines were cantered upwards and away from the SRBs. Once they were moved close to the SRBs, they are exposed to more shaking, and in this way, every single system in the complex SLS engine section must be well tested to ensure that they can withstand those vibrations. The cost estimate for the space launch system and its ground systems has been increased, and the Congress has been notified accordingly. The NASA Associate Administrator for Human Exploration and Operations, Kathy Luders, said that the agency was moving ahead with the SLS development with the goal of a first launch of the heavy lift rocket no later than November 2021. She added that NASA had increased the cost estimated for the development of the SLS and Exploration Ground System EGS, the ground infrastructure needed to support SLS launches. For the SLS, the development's baseline cost is now $9.1 billion, while for the EGS, the cost estimate is about $2.4 billion. NASA was not intent on giving the exact cost by which the programs are increased. However, an assessment of NASA's major programs was done by the Government Accountability Office and reported that NASA had developed a cost of $8.75 billion for the SLS and $2.33 billion in January 2020. According to the reports, this will mean 4% increase for the SLS and a 3% increase for the EGS. Lauder stated that NASA had notified Congress of the new commitments. The new estimates have been calculated to be nearly 30% above the original baseline cost estimates. Congress is most likely not going to make any major changes to the SLS or EGS programs with this notification. A House Appropriations Bill for Fiscal Year 2021, which was passed in January 2021, provided $342.9 million more for SLS and $75 million more for EGS than the request of the administration. Although the Senate has not yet taken up a version of its spending bill, the chairman of the Senate Appropriations Committee, Richard Shelby, is a strong advocate of the SLS. There were estimations that the first flight of the SLS would take place in November 2021, but a test flight which failed and that took place on the 16th of January 2021 could delay the SLS launch. The full duration static fire was designed to simulate a typical launch. The rocket's main engines were burned for approximately 8 minutes at maximum power. Despite a thunderous start, the onboard systems on the vehicle triggered an auto-abort in the first 67 seconds. This is just the latest in a long line of disappointments surrounding the booster. The SLS seemed so simple when it was proposed in 2021. Super Heavy Lift Booster was to be based on lightly modified versions of space shuttle components. Engineers were to attach four of the orbiter's RS-25 engines to the bottom of an enlarged external tank and strap on a pair of similarly elongated solid rocket boosters. In place of the complex winged orbiter, crew and cargo were to ride on something like what was used in the Apollo program. The SLS core stage was rolled out for testing and the SLS was certainly designed to take the path of least resistance. By using flight-proven components assembled in existing production facilities, NASA estimated that the first SLS could be ready for a test flight in 2016. The agency expected that the SLS will be ready to send astronauts beyond low Earth orbit by the early 2020s. This was the perfect time to meet the aspirational goals laid out by President Obama in a 2010 speech at Kennedy Space Center, including the crewed exploration of a nearby asteroid by 2025 and a potential mission to Mars in the 2030s. However, by the time the SLS was expected to make its first flight in 2016, nearly $10 billion had already been spent on the program. Only a few structural test articles had been actually assembled. Each year, NASA moved the date for the booster's first shakedown flight and kept pushing past deadlines of 2017, 18, 19, and 2020. After the recent engine test ended, engineers were able to collect the necessary data to ensure the vehicle could safely perform a full-duration burn. Arguably the most pressing issues with the SLS program is that it seems to have no clear purpose. Being a congressionally mandated project, NASA must continue on with its development regardless of whether or not they actually have a use for it. As there is no clear mission for the SLS, it's been difficult for NASA engineers to make any long-term development plans. What payload does the booster need to carry and to where are key questions that need to be answered. NASA is no longer pursuing the mission to recover a near-Earth asteroid, 
and a human mission to Mars is still years away. Does the several postponements and failures mean that the SLS has not yet been perfected and may need a lot more time and money? Well, we'll just have to wait to find out. Thank you for watching this video, and while you're here, go ahead and click on one of these two videos on your screen. See you there!